Hey there everyone, I'm Alex from Level Up Plus VFX, and for the last half decade I've worked as a professional compositor in the film and television industry. And welcome to Alex's Demystified Nuke Compositing Guide, a series where I'll teach you tons and tips and tricks in order to help you level up your compositing game and get your VFX career off the ground. To kick this series off, we're going to explore the wacky world of keying in Nuke. From basic chroma and luma keys to more advanced techniques and workflows, we're going to explore it all. Before we begin, hit subscribe so you don't miss future episodes, and let's dive right into it. Before we begin, we need to talk about what a key actually is, or what it actually does, is a better way to explain it. So a key can do one of two things. It can be a direct key, which is a key that basically corresponds one value to the value of your alpha. So if you are keying the color red, when the color red is a value of one, the alpha will be set to a value of one. And when the color red is a value of zero, you will have an alpha with a value of zero. There is also an inverse key, which works basically in the opposite way, which takes the value of your color and sets the alpha to a value of zero. So for example, if you're using the color green, that is a value of zero, and as it goes up and farther away from green, you get a nice mask. This is what we usually use for something like a chroma key or a green screen key. Meanwhile, a direct key is more often used as a supplemental for a mask. Now I know that seems a little vague, so let's jump into a practical example where we'll isolate this dark mountain from the bright sky using a direct keyer known as a luminance keyer, and then we'll add the Statue of Liberty to it without doing any roto. I have links to the footage and images I am using for this video down below in the description under resources. So go ahead and grab those now so you can follow along. So let's hop over into Nuke and get that started. The very first thing I'm going to want to do is reformat them both so they are the same resolution. In this case, the project is 3840 by 2160 or UHD 4K. And let's go ahead and add a keyer node. This keyer by default uses the luminance key method, which is a direct keying method. If we go ahead and look through that luminance keyer and hit A on our keyboard for our alpha channel, we can control these sliders in order to isolate our luminance range. Here, I want to crank it to the point where this mountain is black and our sky is white. So if I go ahead and pull it in this way here and pull the highlights darker, we now have an isolation of this mountain. If we drop down a merge node and say our A, which is our statue, goes over B, our mountains, and look through it, we'll notice that our statue looks something like this. Dropping down a transform node here and holding control click to move our origin point here or our center, we can drag it onto our statue. We can then move it into position where we think we want our statue to be. For me, I want to put it right on the top of this mountain here. Finally, if we drag out this little side knob here and plug it into our keyer, we can see that it is now keying our mountain, so our statue is behind it. Something you may want to do as well is try and match the cloudiness of the sky. You could do that by actually extending the top half so it's not fully white. So if we do something like this, it now looks like our statue is behind the mountains, but also covered by some fog. Finally, we could go ahead and do something like add a grade node to get the color a little bit closer. Here, if I look through this node, I can go ahead and do something like set the black point, white point, lift, and gain of my image. These are essentially the four controls you would use to match some basic color. Let's go ahead and start by disabling the node so we don't see our changes checking the black mark ticker here and using control click on a black part of our image to sample it. Then we can do the exact same thing with our white point here. I think we will choose something up on this bright statue here. This one single pixel we can control click and now we've set a white point. Going over back to our mountains we can look through the image again and do the same thing here. Clicking on the lift option we can go ahead and do control shift and then drag to get a range of black pixels. And then we can do the same thing for our gain, control shift and then drag to get a range. Now if we go ahead and look through that A over B node again and re-enable our grade, we can see that some things were changed. However, we're affecting the whole image. This is because we're pre-multiplying our original image by the alpha before doing the grade. So let's go ahead and take our pre-mult option and drop it down below the grade. Alternatively, if you don't have a pre-mult on your image already, you can just add one by doing tab and typing in the word pre-mult. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. 
If we go ahead and disable and re-enable our grade, we can see that our image of our statue fits in much more neatly than it did originally. It feels like it's blending in with some of the clouds and fog in this scene, and it overall feels like it's color matched better when we disable and re-enable the grade. Obviously, there is much more you could do to try and get this to fit in where you want, but this is a great example of what a direct key can do. Now, of course, if we want our Statue of Liberty to feel like it's a little bit closer to the edge of this environment, we probably need to make it a bit darker. The first thing I do is go back into my luminance key and maybe pull this up a little bit more so it feels a little bit closer like that. However, now our colors don't really feel like they're matching up as good, even though they're better than the original. We can fix this by doing a couple different things, and the big one would be playing with our gamma slider. If we go ahead and raise this up, we can flatten out our image more until it gets a little bit closer to the edge of these mountains. I'm also noticing a white here on the edge, which we can use a simple erode node. If we use the erode blur filter, we can kind of bring that in a little bit. Finally, you would want to do something like matching the grain, and you might end up with an image that looks like this where our grain is matched and our statue is matched as well. All right, now that you have an understanding of the fundamentals of what a direct keyer can do via a luminance key, it's time to jump into the fun stuff, a green screen key. So next week, I'll be showing you my personal workflow that I use for green screen keys on almost all of my projects. The setup I'm gonna show you is gonna allow you to reliably and consistently create green screen keys that will be ready for your next reel. So stay tuned, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.